speaking of state codes and laws that govern what they do as an agency, did you come across anything uh, in terms of what discretion they have yeah, uh, in uh, issue, writing up a violation well, or enforcing it? There, there, I think on the enforcement side, there was one area where we don't believe they had discretion, and at least the previous administration thought they did, and that was when there's a violation. The previous administration basically said, and we feel very clear that the law you know, that was passed by um, a Republican majority and signed into law by um, Governor Corbett was on the other side of this and in agreement with us. And actually, the, the new administration agrees with our side of this. And that is, when there was a violation, the previous DEP administration, DEP obviously it's still the same department, would say, landowner and driller, you guys figure it out, come to a deal, and we'll help figure out the details if, if we need to. We think that that is not the way to go, and the new administration agrees with us. And that is, it is the responsibility of the department to figure out the solution. And to expect somebody who you know, is, has another job, you know, no, may not be able to afford the best attorneys in the world, to sort of sit there and negotiate with, in some instances, a well-funded drilling company and their legal team is, is literally unfair, in my opinion. That's just a fairness issue. But beyond that, we felt the law was clear. It was the department's job to figure out the solution. And they were, in a sense, delegating that. And that was, I think, our, one of our hardest hitting recommendations that I know the new, new administration agrees with our assessment. And we feel f pretty clear that the law was on our side anyway. If an inspector finds a violation, is it your belief that they need to write that up, regardless of what would happen with enforcement? Yes, yes. And, and a couple of reasons for that. We understand that first time violators, minus, again, we're talking about let's move rape, child molestation, murder aside. I mean, on most non violent crimes, and I'm not saying this is a crime, but most, non, you know, there's, there's a sentencing guideline of whether it's a first offense, second offense, third offense. Mm -hmm. Everybody understands that in the world of criminal justice. Etc. So now, again, I, I want to make clear that's not we're not equating these to the crimes. There may be some instances where that happened, but that's not what we're talking about here. But if somebody has a violation, the reason why you need to write that up is, if it ends up three, four times down the line, they do a serious violation. You then look at that person as a repeat offender, as opposed to if you've never write them up because it was quote unquote minor, and then something major happens, you don't have the same type of an ability to hold them as accountable as they need to be held accountable. So that's why you need to write up every instance. Now, if it's a minor, we clearly understand that's a different level of fines and punishment as opposed to something major. But you have to document all of that because if somebody turns out to be a, a repeat offender, the DEP is going to need that information if they go before some environmental hearing court. Mm -hmm. So enforcement-wise, they could set different amounts of penalties or a Absolutely. Uh, depending on what type of the, the offense is and, and how, you know, again, there's a willing versus an accident, you know, and then you go through, did they take the appropriate protocols, but just an act of God, et cetera. All of those things come into play, but, you, but anytime there's a violation, you need to write them up. That way there's a track record. Mm 